Welcome to Comfort.ai, making artificial intelligence your comfort zone. In this episode of Ethics Talks, we have an amazing guest called Davi Valfir. Got that right? Amazing. Good enough. <laughs> uh, with an amazing background. So I would let Davi introduce himself. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Saba. Thank you for having me. Um, my background is I've spent many, many years as the CIO of multiple banks. Um, preceding that, um, I was a software developer and preceding that, I spent nearly 10 years in the military. So certainly not a typical path, um, but that's how we get to be speaking today. Yeah, no, that's an, it's an amazing path. And there are so many aspects of ethics that I want to talk to you about. Uh, so very, very excited about this. But before we jump into um, talking about ethics, I want to know your opinion about what you think ethics is, and mm. particularly in, in technology. Yeah, so one of the useful things of having a having a windy path to get where you are is that you, you get to see ethics in practice in very in different domains. Mm. Uh, ethics are the guardrails uh, by which we make decisions, both long term and short term, and the way in which we consider what the impact of those decisions are going to be mm. on society, on each other, uh, and, and our companies, etc. So ethics, think of them as guardrails, think of them as the framework for which we make good decisions or bad decisions, mm. uh, but certainly a framework. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So um, let's dive into the three sections. Uh, CIO, so leadership. Yes. Um, I know you're from the banking industry, so finance and then military as well. Yeah. So uh, I want to dig a little bit into the role that ethics plays in each of these mm -hmm. kind of areas. Uh, which one should we start with? Well, um, they are not that unrelated to each other, in okay. fact. Um, so in the, in the financial services industry, uh, ethics are absolutely critical because of the systemic impact mm. um, that our financial lives have mm. uh, and the custodial role that banks play. You know, if you think about it, all of our life savings live in those uh, live in mm. banks, um, our future financial hopes and dreams, yeah. the final funding of our educations, of our homes, those are all done via financial services mm. institutions. Um, so it's massively important that those reflect the ethics of the societies in which they operate. Um, when that goes wrong, uh, you mm -hmm. see large scale failures and those failures are normally predicated by a loss of trust yeah. of, those of those customers um, who then start divesting from those organizations and eventually um, they collapse. Unfortunately, when that does happen, when those ethics go awry, it hurts people who can't afford to be hurt. It hurts people whose money was in those institutions. And here we think of large historical failures such as Lehman Brothers and others, mm. where the, the chase for profit over, over um, principle uh, mm. causes huge damage in society. That is, yeah. Yeah. In the military, uh, the, the concept of ethics is a very interesting one, uh, considering what militaries are created to do. Yes. Um, it's even more important that they, uh, that they are trained to do that within the frame of the countries re that they represent and the cultures that mm -hmm. they represent. Mm -hmm. uh, the use of militaries we've seen a broad spectrum of over the decades. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on the, on the objective of the observer, they are either acting ethically or they are not. Um, and that gets into the space where ethics is in fact a very cultural and national uh, framework of thinking. Um, from my personal experience, I was in the South African military during the time of the handover of government from the old nationalist government, the uh, apartheid era government, into the, uh, into the Rainbow Nation government of Nelson Mandela. And I can tell you that many within the military were struggling with the concept of yesterday's enemy becoming, becoming today's ruling party. Wow. Uh, so ethics came under real strain. Mm. And, and then it also was very much a question of those who serve, why do they serve? Do they serve for personal conviction? Do they serve as professional servants of, of society? Um, so all of these are dimensions that play into our perceptions of ethics. Mm, great. And what about leadership? Because I know you've done a lot of that, you know, and I, um, I've i always saw you, seen you as one of the best leaders that I've ever worked with. So oh, what that's very sort kind of, of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so what sort of um, role do you think ethics plays when it comes to people, relationships? Mm, mm. Well, again, um, the leadership frame or what is good leadership differs uh, mm -hmm. in countries and nationalities in, in, uh, in cultures. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly my guiding light has always been that we, we have to honor individuals and that mm -hmm. the, the, role, the role of the leader is to make individuals possible. Mm -hmm. And the, the way to make individuals possible is to, is to have a very clear guiding star for what the the principles of, of good behavior are, the, the principles of moral behavior are, mm. and then to be the example of those things as far as you possibly can. 
um, the failures of leadership come about when, when we espouse one thing and we act in a different way. So there has to be a very clear consistency between uh, the values, the norms and the ethics uh, of a leader and the way in which they actually behave towards their organizations and towards people that they interact with. So that's always been my, uh, my aspiration. We all get it wrong, there's no doubt about it. We all have bad days. But uh, the trick is to have a star that you can, that you can look at and that mm. you can steer towards mm. and to keep that true. Mm. Um, it is quite challenging. There are times when your personal values uh, do get challenged yeah. uh, as, you, as you lead through organizations. And then you have to have the courage to stick with what you believe. Yeah, wow. amazing, amazing. So considering all of that, and that was, that was great to kind of understand ethics from these three different perspectives. Um, one question that I always get asked is, okay, you know, you always, or anyone that always talks about ethics is very, it, it's very theoretical, mm. you know, it's, it's like an ideal scenario that we talk about, yeah. that it's always good. So learning you know, from the learnings that you've had from these three kind of aspects, how mm. do you think we can practically uh, apply, you know, ethical principles um, when we do anything? So then we'll kind of go into technology yeah. as well. Yeah, ethics can easily be an esoteric conversation. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's the the theory of the of the trolley problem, or the you know who should survive in the car accident when we when we have self driving mm -hmm. cars and so forth. And actually, um, I believe that the principles of ethics are a lot more practical, right? Mm -hmm. If you start with if we start with the principle of 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 doing of doing no harm or doing as little harm as we can in every decision, then we're already on a good track. Mm -hmm. It's it's when we lose sight of the fact that technology should be serving us as humankind. Mm. Um, and we start setting up technologies that are there for a different purpose than that. That's when we start blurring the moral line of how we should be using technology and how we should be thinking of those solutions. Uh, it's very easy to get lost in the, in the chase for the next billion dollar unicorn app, um, which causes enough noise and excitement that one could easily lose sight of the fact that even in the most innocent looking apps, we're yeah. still touching people's daily lives. And yes. the impact of that has to be top of mind all the time. Yeah, yeah, no, great. So um, considering all of that, uh, is there any technology, and in particular, I'm gonna kind of go a bit deeper in AI, is there anything out there that's being developed at the moment that concerns you? Mm. Um, yes, and. <laughs> There's, you know, all, all, all technology is a, is, can be a two-edged sword. In yeah. fact, uh, you recommended a great book to me, uh, which I've just finished reading, Tools and Weapons by Brad Smith, which was a really en enlightening read. Mm -hmm. um, and in the book, um, there is a fairly deep set of discussions about exactly that, the, the, two, the two sides to technology. Um, I'm a big fan of, of, of autonomous everything, autonomous vehicles, mm -hmm. um, you know, autonomous decision making. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the branches of that is the use of autonomy in, in weapons in, in the military. And that is a set of technologies that has potential to go awry at scale, um, especially when that decision making starts, uh, you know, controlling uh, weapons of mass destruction, where yeah. responses are automated, where responses mm -hmm. are, are interpretive. Um, that's, that's, that's a domain that I get a little bit worried about. Yeah. Um, you know, the use of, of autonomous driving vehicles and the like, learning vehicles, um, I think those are great, right? I reckon mm -hmm. that um, potentially, you know, children who are four and five years old today might never need to learn to drive. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great thing because fundamentally we're quite bad at it, you know, <laughs> as we can tell. Especially when it rains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Having just driven here, I can tell you there are many people who are not that good at it. Yeah. Um, but certainly when you, when you add to that something sharp and pointy or, or yeah. something with a, with a weapon attached to it, mm -hmm. we, should be, we should be watching very carefully. Yeah. So... Interesting. I was going to ask you another question, but you just kind of touched on it. Um, are you against using kind of AI in anything military or no, just the weapons? No, no. Um, it's the concept of autonomy that becomes scary, not right. the use of AI. Okay. So I think that um, the more we can, we can uh, enrich the decisions that we make, the more we can support those decisions with, with, with processing capability that as humans we can never have. You know, mm. there are especially on a, on a modern battle, battlefield, the, uh, the data environment is so rich mm. that as humans, we just skim over the top and we see what we think we see, we see what looks familiar and we, uh, we apply pattern matching to it. Whereas the smart use of AI in rapidly moving data environments is exactly what AI is yeah. intended to be used for. 
it's where the decision whether or not to harm others is made without the intervention of humans mm. is where is where I start getting really concerned. Yeah, yeah, good, good point. Um, you have another experience which is uh, very handy when it comes to you know talking about AI and future. Oh dear, how did that get out in the public? <laughs> <laughs> and that is, uh, you're a parent. You've got I a am. you've got a, a daughter. So uh, my question is, what kind of future do you want to see the current AI developers mm. create for the future of, of your child? Well, um, I take great hope from my conversations with my daughter. She's mm. uh, she turns fourteen in June, and the level of care and concern that she has for the world and for humanity mm. um, tells me that whatever direction she's going to take, that is going to be her her guiding light and and her set of principles and ethics. Um, I was once asked a number of years ago, um, happened to be on a radio show, uh, what we should, what should our children be going to study? Mm. And if we take for granted the fact that our children need to be technology literate, they need to be technology proficient, even technology excellent, mm -hmm. the part that we have to not forget to teach them is how to be good humans. Very cool. That's, I like that. <laughs> That's very cool. Um, is there any question that you wanted me to ask you that I didn't ask you? <laughs> it's my favorite question. <laughs> yes, everybody. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. What am I excited about in the use of in the use of, of AI and, and in all its various forms? Mm. Um, so in my in my current uh, phase of my career, I have the privilege of spending a lot of time uh, with 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 smart small young companies that are growing from nowhere, uh, mm. including your your own. Um, and the force multiplier that, that the use of AI brings to them is, is, just, is just magical. You know, in the, in, the, in the bad old days where matching algorithms were, were literally people trying to, you know, come up mm. with smart mathematical answers to things and were trying to learn things about behavior that were just not possible for them to learn. Yeah. Today, those technologies are accessible to, to virtually anyone who can, who can sign up to an Amazon account. Mm. Um, and, and I find that force multiplication effect is, is just absolutely magical. Yeah. You know, it's opening up markets that didn't exist, mm -hmm. solving problems that we couldn't solve, that we just had to live with. Um, so all in, I see a huge wave of, of, of improvement of our daily lives coming in the not too distant future from, yeah. from the application. Yeah, that is a really good point. Normally when we talk about ethics, everyone kind of thinks about the negative aspect of it and yeah. how can it go wrong. But um, on the positive side, it is making things a lot more accessible yes. to to a lot of people. And, and you're right, it's bringing lots of possibilities and yeah. breaking barriers and stuff. And, and that's what excites me. Too. And often in non-obvious places, right? Is, yeah. that, uh, is that some of these sort of uh, pattern matching uh, that you need to be able to do is between uh, people who want to rent homes and can't mm -hmm. find them or uh, you know, in financial services, obviously, and how do we how do we lend well, mm. and lend in a way that doesn't put people into deeper financial trouble that they are in, or you know, yeah. uh, or helps them to best enhance that lending into growing their wealth. Mm. Uh, in the medical field, how do we prevent uh, massively preventable bad diagnoses from happening by supporting surgeons and general general practitioners and the like. You know, so I'm I'm extremely bullish on the on the future of AI. Mm. In fact, if you wanted to think of a of a of an ethical question, I think it would be unethical for us not to explore the power of AI. That is that's a really good point. You're actually the second person that has mentioned that, and that's oh, really? yeah, that is that is a good point. And it's the concept of bad ethics is yeah. that you think about the negative aspects so much that you stop something that could be beneficial for the society from developing absolutely and that in right. itself can be um absolutely right. can be quite dangerous uh wow thank you so much i am sure that we can kind of carry on talking and talking i, I never get tired of talking about ethics as you know um <laughs> any last words you wanted to add um yes uh I think uh, having having spoken to to Frances Valentine about her concerns on um, our national response and our national emerging complacency from our response to the to the recent pandemic, um, I took great heed uh, to, from her words. Great, took great caution from her words, and I think we need to be careful to take our, to be careful of taking our foot off the innovation accelerator mm. because it feels like we're in a new normal. The fact is that the world is not in a new normal and that as a society we cannot cannot even think about mm -hmm. becoming comfortable with the way things are in New Zealand. Mm 
because the rest of the world is still suffering badly and we have a huge contribution to make to alleviate that suffering as long as we keep our eye on the fact that it's up to us we have the conditions we have the minds we have the technology Mm. let's apply it keep applying it and keep pushing yeah let's not sit back and become complacent that's very good. Thank you so much. And I'll try and reach out to Frances Valentine, see if I can get her on the show. Oh, yeah. so Absolutely. Cool. I'm sure she'd love to be. Yeah. Thank you so much. And um, so Dowie mentioned a book that I recommended called Tools and Weapons. I'll make sure to include the link in the bio for any of you who are interested to go and read more about the book. Uh, in the meantime, let me know if you have any questions for me or your, for Dowie. And remember, technology can be fun, fashionable and fabulous.